Greetings, gamers. Gurk here. Uh, I'd like to talk, tell you today about what you're going to need to do in order to be successful on the high-risk server. First thing you're going to need to do is you're probably going to need to drop a whole lot of stuff. Now, don't be scared, though. Remember, nothing that you drop on the high-risk server will actually be gone from your character from Adventure Mode or your private server. Your character on high risk is a copy of your Adventure Mode character. Your Adventure Mode character is not affected whatsoever by anything that you do on high risk. You could script all your legendaries, drop all your ammo, drop all your meds or whatever, and it won't affect you in the main game. So just don't be worried about it. So as you're dropping a whole bunch, as you have no weight reduction perks or legendary abilities on your armor, like you know weapon weight reduction, Remember that currently, these are the settings for high risk. The most important thing here is PvP is always on. You cannot be in pacifist mode. Even at level 2, you can be killed by other players. Okay, secondly, there's no perks, so you don't even bother. You may as well just unselect all your perks because they're not going to do anything for you anyway. And not even legendary perks. Those just are turned off as well. Okay, now any of your cool legendary weapons, like bloody faster fire rate or whatever, just forget about them. They're, you can still use them with all the mods and stuff they have on them, but those legendary effects are not active anymore. Okay, so it'll save the effect, but it doesn't actually do the effect on the high-risk server. Uh, let's see. Effectively, you're just, you know, be using uh, legendary armor and... I mean non-legendary armor and non-legendary weapons. Now on to consumables. Remember that you drop everything on your character when you die except for the following. Weapons, armor, and apparel. You do not drop those things. Okay, stim packs, ammo, med, foods, drinks, plans, and even any hollow tapes you have on you, you're going to drop those. If it's droppable, you're going to drop it um, when you die. Now, what you're going to need to do is you're going to have to stash away some stuff, you know, anticipating this happening. So what you're going to want to put into your stash box is some extra stim packs, some meds, some ammo, etc. Um, and you can hopefully, you'll be able to resupply more quickly when you get killed by someone. And then you can go back and get revenge on them and hopefully get your stuff back. Now, the good part of a high-risk server is this. And I know those all sounded really negative, okay? Uh, oh, there's one more negative. There's also no fast traveling, but I'll get to that in a minute. Or very limited fast traveling to make it uh, more precise. Okay, all crafting, however, is free. But there is an important thing. You're going to have to do it without any perks, meaning you won't be able to use Super Duper or, you know, Chemist or anything. You won't have any of those abilities to, like, double it. So it's going to take a while to do the crafting. Um, additionally, and this is very important, people need to know that you can only craft things that your character knows the plans for. So if you don't know how to make a stim pack in the adventure mode and you go into uh, <laughs> high risk, then you can't make stim packs. So once you die, which is probably going to be often, uh, you're not going to have any stim packs on you. So that's why it's not. I do not recommend you playing a low-level character that doesn't know anything, doesn't really have anything, on the high-risk server. Okay, now, final tips. Your character is not visible on the map uh, to non-party members. That means there will be no white dot showing on the map that shows where you are. Um, also, like okay, some things that are very important that you're going to want to have is uh, Berry Mentats, so that you can see people that are using Stealth Boys or a Chinese Stealth Suit. And you're probably going to want to be using those yourself. So ideally, yeah, you would have a character that would have a Chinese Stealth Suit and or a bunch of Stealth Boys. But remember, if you die, you drop all those Stealth Boys. So that's the downside to using the Stealth Boys over the Chinese Stealth Suit. Uh, make sure you turn off the Camp Beacon that shows where your camp is on the map, unless you're using it as a trap to lure players to, that you want to kill. Uh, don't play in a team unless it is a team of actual friends. Otherwise, you're likely going to make it easier for a killer to find you and or your camp. And they're probably going to grief you by like destroying your camp. Sometimes they might do it just to see the explosions, and other times they might just do it 
to like try to provoke people into into fighting them. Okay, remember this high risk server really is all about PvP. That's what its point is. Okay, now back to the fast traveling that I mentioned earlier. You can only fast travel to certain locations on the map for free, and actually at all, because fast travel in general is disabled. But you can fast travel to Vault 76, Foundation, Crater, the Rusty Pick, and Fort Atlas. But only if you have discovered these. Now, additionally, you can also, of course, fast travel to your camp and the camp of any teammates. However, if you go into workshops and you take over a workshop, in the normal game, you can fast travel to a workshop you own. In high risk, unfortunately, you cannot, which I think is utterly stupid, but hopefully they'll improve that in the future. Um, and lastly, uh, if you have Fallout First, you get a great advantage over regular players that don't, uh, as you will be able to use your survival tent to respawn at, as well as resupply yourself if you die. So what I often do is I'll set up a survival tent near where I think I'm going to probably be getting into a PvP encounter, like I am here in the video, and uh, just keep moving that survival tent closer and closer as you are running towards where you believe you're going to be into a conflict. Now I'll talk about the best weapons to use in high risk are uh, flamers and cryolators. And the reason is no armor really has much in the way of fire or cold resistance, especially when they're not legendary. Um, if you don't have any of those, then what you're going to need is a weapon that fires fast and has a high capacity. Okay, in order to beat people's like healing up you need to be able to output a lot of damage quickly. So like the Plasma Flamer is good because you can have, I think, like 300 rounds in that. Uh, a minigun would be good, a 50 caliber machine gun. Those all have pretty high capacities on them and they can output damage pretty fast, but remember you're having to use non-legendary ones. So, I mean, you'll that's just my only suggestion. Um, I hope these tips help you enjoy the high-risk server while it is available. Please like, comment, and most importantly, subscribe to my channel. Turn on notifications so YouTube should let you know when I post a new video. Remember, Fallout 76 item giveaway is coming up at 1,000 subs uh, for all three systems, PC, Xbox, and PlayStation. For now, this is GamerGurk signing out, telling you all to live long and game on.